Welcome back to D10 tonight, our weekly one-hour election program. You've just heard from another panel of candidates seeking a seat in the 31st Guam Legislature. Who better to ask how they did and talk about things all politics than former Lieutenant Governor of Guam, Kaleo Moylan, and our special guest tonight, former Democratic Party of Guam Chairperson Attorney Mike Phillips. He's sitting in tonight for former Senator Francis Santos. Good to see you guys, and thanks for joining us tonight. Now, before we get to uh, your rundown of the candidates, first, uh, Mike, a lot of people want to know why you decided not to run for office. You've talked about the possibility what uh, was the decision as to what, what, why, why did you decide not to run? You know, I listened to uh, Kaleo's explanation, his answer uh, to that same question uh, regarding why I didn't run. And uh, I think a lot of the things he said were, were right on point. Uh, when I do things, I, I want to do them uh, the best I can. I want to do them right. And uh, after real careful analysis and really a lot of hard work, um, we came to the collective decision that uh, just uh, wasn't time. Not that it wouldn't have been a, uh, a great run, but uh, people of Guam are still, uh, and rightfully so, uh, demanding that when you commit to um, a process like that, that you spend a few years and, and, uh, and you're ready. And uh, we just were not ready at, at the moment. And uh, so when we do it, um, we'll do it the right way. Well, you know, after the filing deadline passed, the, the Democratic Party came out with a, a press release basically saying that the party is, is united. Is that the case here? I think it can be. Um, there's never been a, a time breed where anything uh, happened because somebody didn't run. It's because somebody steps up to the plate and, uh, and makes things happen. Uh, in my case, uh, whether it was uh, some of the class actions I had or, or more uh, specifically uh, some of my work at Mount Carmel, uh, that needed to be finished. Uh, with regard to uh, uh, the fact that because I'm not running, the party's united, I think that, that remains to be seen. But it, uh, it very well could be the case if, uh, if people step up and do the hard work. Lots, lots of work ahead. Okay. Well, you know, we had an interesting mix of candidates tonight. Uh, what do you think, uh, any of them stand out, uh, starting with you, Kaleo? Well, I think, you know, uh, going uh, over the, this group of candidates tonight, uh, the, the new candidates did it well. I thought Steve Garreau uh, was sharp and on point tonight. And I thought on the Democrat side that Karina Ludwig did very well as well. So those two candidates in particular, uh, I thought, uh, came across very polished and were well prepared uh, for the questions tonight. What about you, Mike? What did, what did you think of the candidates that were in studio? I think they did good. You know, uh, as someone who's been here um, many times, and I've been uh, with Cleo and, and many, many others, I, I realize how uh, difficult that can be. Uh, they're running for office, and, and when I was uh, party chair, I uh, tried to start most of my, uh, my speeches in the villages by congratulating the candidates that are running, uh, because those of us on the sidelines really uh, uh, have to give them that respect. It's not an easy thing to do. And so they put themselves out there uh, with Claire, I was in the back watching the text, and uh, what a rough crowd out there. And, uh, and so that's what you expect when you run for office, and, uh, and it's happening. And so. Uh, I can't say anything but good things about the candidates running. It takes a lot of courage and it's a huge investment and, and they're putting that forward. And I'd ask everybody to be kind with them and, and make your best choices. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, you mentioned Kaleo that uh, they, some of them were polished and what have you. What about some of the responses uh, to the questions that were asked of them? For example, the Health Care Reform Act. I, I, again, I thought that uh, uh, Steve Garreau uh, and uh, Karina had uh, read the act, or it appeared, uh, were uh, informed on it. That is an issue that is going to impact the community uh, starting this year, going all the way to uh, 2014. And uh, not only the legislature, but the gubernatorial candidates, as well as the congressional candidate, need to get involved early on this question and inform the public how it's going to impact the community, because rate increases will come. Um, and, and I don't think that the act's intent uh, of providing affordable, uh, accessible health care is going to be met, and I think it's going to jeopardize the health insurance industry. And as currently written, it has a, a detrimental impact on whether or not insurance companies will have a viability of existing going forward. So this is a serious issue, and I think that uh, the community needs to get behind and, and learn a little bit more about what's happening currently. Do you agree, Mike? I think it's uh, ambitious, uh, actually great policy. Uh, I think uh, the problem, of, as Kaleo points out, is, is really the business side of it. We'll have maybe 30, 32 million more uh, Americans that uh, are uh, able to uh, receive uh, health care and, and, uh, and do so in, in a normal way, so to speak, 
but uh, it hasn't come down to uh, the business side yet. And of course, you know, uh, that's what uh, uh, makes it or breaks it in the end. And, and I guess it's what, uh, Cleo, 2019, um, almost 10 years from now. Uh, there's a chance that uh, healthcare as we know it today uh, will be very, very different. And that may mean that uh, the private sector's left out. I don't think that's the best way to go. And I think that there's major reform uh, before that takes place. But we have children today that will be receiving health care that wouldn't have uh, received it yesterday. Mm -hmm. And um, the numbers by the Congressional Budget Office demonstrate that it's supposed to be somewhere near revenue neutral for the government. Mm -hmm. The problem is now we have to work uh, on the business side and make sure that we bring business along. Um, otherwise, I, I don't think it'll work. Well, what recommendations would you give to the candidates in terms of keeping track of of current events and what issues they should pay closer attention to aside from the Health Care Reform Act? Is the question to me or, or clear? Uh, both of you, but we'll start with you. <laughs> okay, well, one thing I would suggest uh, maybe taking a few steps back is that uh, collectively we on Guam reinstitute um, current events. Remember when we were in uh, uh, school, uh, that was uh, an absolute. Uh, today, uh, watching KOAM or, or reading the PDN or, or watching ABC7 are kind of like electives and can't be that way. And, and in the past, I've heard some responses to questions where I've wondered whether or not uh, certain candidates were in tune at all with the issue. So I think fundamentally, um, it's not a choice. They need to be in tuned uh, in an intimate way with every single issue. You're going to run for office, you really have to have the answers. You have to dictate um, the political environment. And uh, Claire and I were discussing uh, beforehand how uh, it's a little bit of a contrast because uh, kind of in the past you would have philosophical differences, but everybody would be able to discuss issues and they could get passionate about it. And so that would be my first recommendation is before you run, to off, uh, run for office, uh, become intimately familiar with all the issues and hopefully that's already part of our education process on Guam. I agree with Mike. You know, before you run, you need to come here prepared. Uh, one of the things that you should do uh, to get a pulse of what's happening in the community is certainly follow what the news media is covering. And then take it a step further. Research the, uh, the issues yourselves. Call in a focus group of those in the industry that are being affected and get their opinion on, on the issues and what the solutions uh, can be. Because if, if you're not engaging the, the key stakeholders, you're gonna miss out on an opportunity to really try to champion the cause that is affecting the community. If I could add, um, um, I think Kaleo has a good point there. And uh, on top of that, uh, the stakeholders, the people in, in that side of the, uh, the business, they already have most of the answers. And so it doesn't mean you necessarily have to agree with them, but I would start there because uh, it, it's the work they do and, and they really are the experts and it, it makes a lot of sense to start there. All right, well, thank you guys for joining us. Stay tuned, we'll wrap up our show after this.